Processing Milky Way using stacking. So just regular DSLR shots. Um, these are a few I got tonight uh, with Venus looking pretty cool. Um, and I use Bridge to just preview them. So I've opened it up in Bridge. I've made the adjustments that I want in Camera Raw here. Um, and I've got my four images here. They're all slightly different and you can see as I scroll through each one, um, the reason that top one is looks slightly underexposed is because it has a different aperture but I'm going to stack them all together anyway um, to reduce the noise and it will it will average out the, the color and the exposure anyway. But you can see as I scroll through them that the Milky Way and the clouds are slightly moving. Uh, and there's a little bit of movement in that tree as well at the front because it was a bit windy. And what I hope to achieve is to reduce the noise by stacking all of these so that when we zoom in, it actually looks pretty cool. Um, and you want, you want that kind of smooth result if you're publishing your images, like if you're publishing in a magazine or anywhere in print. Usually online you can get away with it because the photos are quite small and you can do a bit of noise reduction and no one can tell the difference. But as soon as you start talking about print, you really need to uh, to start stacking these images to get the best quality out of them all. Um, so I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. We shall see. Um, so let's just get right into it. So I've got my images all synced up here. Um, what I do is I use auto and then I adjust the sliders depending on what I want to get out of um, the image. And I also use this little tab over here, Lens Corrections. And if you tick that, it'll figure out what, uh, what lens you're using and it will apply the corrections. Now, if I remove that, you can see the vignetting gets, um, gets quite nicely removed and the distortion at the edges as well. So that's a really good thing to have. So with all of these images selected now, I use the shift select to select all of those. And I'll save those images as one, uh, make it a TIFF file. Uh, we'll select the folder that we want it in there. And actually you don't need to put in one. I'm just going to say begin numbering from one. You can call it whatever you want. I just call it, um, I begin the numbering at one, so that I'd end up with one, two, three, four dot tiff. So we'll save all of those now. And you can see in the corner here, it's saving them all off. And while that's doing that, I use nebulosity for stacking. Um, and you'll see why in a second. It's really the align and combine that it uses. So I'm going to not open the file, that was wrong. I'm going to go to align and combine images. Um, for this example we will save the stack and we're going to use translation and rotation. And now it prompts me, I go back to the folder. I've got my one, two, three, four in here. So shift open all of those. And now we're going to pick stars. What it wants you to do for this alignment procedure is it's going to try and rotate the Milky Way so that they all line up and it's going to stack the Milky Way like that. So I'm just going to pick a couple of bright stars. So I'll pick this star over here and click and it tries to guess in the next one if it's the same star. It is, so I'm just going to keep clicking. So four clicks. Now it's put a crosshairs on that one, which means it's finished the first alignment point. So I usually pick a second star somewhere on the other side so that the rotation is nice. And just click that, you'll get a green circle. One, two, three, and four. And now it will stack those. So it will lose a lot of this grainy noise. Now I save that off as background. Or I just call it BG. Um, it will save it as a FIT file, which is uh, an astronomical file, so I usually save it as a TIFF as well. So save as TIFF, 
and bg.tiff. Uh, now I'm going to run that again because you'll see what's happened here in the front. Can you see how blurry the tree looks now? Um, it might not come through on the stream, so I'll just zoom in. The sky is looking a lot clearer. It's a lot, uh, a lot less noisy than it was but the tree has completely blurred out because it's aligning on the stars so now it looks like the foreground is streaking through. So what we want to do is a completely new stack align and combine and we'll do no alignment. So it's just going to take those four images that we have and it's going to just stack them as they, as they are so that the tree should be nice and sharp again. Uh, there was a little bit of movement in the tree that was the wind but that'll be a lot more subtle than this big streakiness of the tree that we have here. You can use average, I use the standard deviation just to make it a little bit more severe, um, but both are more or less equal. So I'll grab those four files again, it's going to stack them this time with no alignment. You can see how noisy the sky was before. These individual subs are really, really noisy at 1600 ISO. So I'm going to call this foreground, FG. And you can see now the stars are streaking. <laughs> so now that, we've, now that we've stacked on the foreground, the stars have all just completely messed up. Um, but the tree and everything in the foreground, much sharper and much, much less noise, actually, than you'd get with 1600 ISO. So it's removed a lot of that foreground noise, which is great. So what we're going to do now is combine these two shots that I've got. So I'll save that off as foreground.tiff, fg.tiff. And now we'll go and open these in Photoshop. So I've got my bg and fg.tiff, open in Photoshop. Okay, so we've got them open here. That's the background, so all the stars are looking good. Actually, I'll just make this a bit wider. Okay, stars are looking good in that one. And foreground, where the foreground is nice and sharp, but the stars are all messed up. So we want to combine these two images. So I'll take the background, select all, which is Command A or Control A, copy, and I'll go to my foreground and I'll just paste it in as a layer. There we go. Now we've got these two layers here, one layer with the stars looking good, and if I turn that off, the layer with the foreground looking good. So essentially what we want to do is cut out the foreground of the of this one where it's all blurred and horrible so that the layer below it with the nice background but a nice foreground shows through and the best way to do that of course is with a mask so we'll just add layer mask which creates the white mask here and I'm going to grab a big brush and I'm going to do this real real rough um, you can spend a lot of time doing this so because I'm selecting I've selected here on the layer, it's automatically made it a black brush. And if I paint that in, you should be able to see the tree be nice and clear because it's essentially cutting out the blurry streaked tree from the stacking in the um, top layer. And now we're seeing the, the nice stacked, stacked with no alignment foreground. And that's really all that needs. I'm going to go through and just paint in all these other areas. You can see things just pop through. See if I change this to white again, you can see how that just goes all blurry. Change it to black, nice and clear. So I'm just painting all those edges in. I'm trying not to go too far into the, the actual um, sky because that's where we have our nice sharp stars. Although there's some cloud here, so it's going to make it easier for us. So I'll paint all this sharp foreground back in. That's quite blurry. 
that then I'll paint it back in. So layer masking is really, really key for all of this. Now, if you're not sure what I've just done, oops, I was at a lower opacity, that's better. So that's nice and obvious. That should be really obvious to you now. I just had the opacity of that brush set quite low before, so it was coming back in a bit sharper, but not, not as sharp as it really is. So there it is, nice and sharp. I'll go back over everything. I'm painting the black in that layer mask so that our tree detail comes back in, our foreground detail is coming back in. And yeah, we don't want to go too far into the sky, otherwise you can see the noisiness of the sky trying to creep back in there. You can see between the branches on the tree how noisy the sky is without the stacking. There we go, foreground nice and sharp now. Alright, and just to make it clear what we've done here, I'll zoom back out again. Now if I toggle this layer, you can see the stars just coming in nicely, nice and noiseless. And if I hold down Alt and click on the layer mask, you can see where I've drawn or I've basically cut out that, uh, that mask on the uh, layer to, to let those parts of the foreground in. And you see I've missed a, a bit here, so I can get my brush again and brush all that as well. And in fact, I wanted to I could brush all of that bottom area because we know that that's all foreground but it's quite dark so that's why it doesn't make a big difference when we're doing it on screen and miss that tree on the side there so I'll brush all that back in Okay, that's looking pretty good. And so now you can just add your final edits and you've got a really clean stacked image. If I zoom right in, you see the stars are, even though I'm shooting at 1600 on a fairly basic camera, that's all looking great. So hopefully that helps your Milky Way processing. This is sort of the next level with the Milky Way stuff. Instead of just taking a single exposure and then editing it, um, stacking your exposures, layer masking the foreground and the background, and then uh, editing your image from that point onwards. Okay, hope that helps.